Can't help smiling, Spider. Just can't help it. I've got this warm glow all over. Right then. The purpose of this meeting, Mr Chairman, is to interrogate you. But, having known you for quite some time, I can't see that being very profitable. <laughs> Where's my clothes? In our lab. I'm going to test. Lying in a heap outside, more likely. Stand up, son. All right. What are you doing with all this clobber? What time is it, eh? It's early. It's very early. But we are very happy to work two terms. Huh? Mmm. Very tasty, this. Mmm. Right, then. House-breaking implements. A rope, a grapnel, dark clothing, climbing boots. For your previous old sport, I don't reckon you'll get much change out of two years. Do you think maybe they'll let you out to sit on this inquiry, eh? <laughs> We're a bit busy in here. I've had a word with your governor. I'm to see Scott alone. You're off the force now, Mr. Moody. Two minutes. I told you what a great help you were last night. You do get around a bit, don't you? All right, but don't be long. Breaks up my effort. Lost the West Indians, did you? It was dark. Yes, it usually is at night. Oh, uh, could we have Mr. Scott's clothes back? Yes. Yeah. Did you find anything? I'm sorry, I'm not with you. What were you up to in Thresher's office? Ah, now you've lost me. The suspect's closed, sir. Oh, yes, thanks, cousin. All right. Look, nobody wants to see you do more time. Well, how about Godzilla out there, eh? Nobody that matters. Do you smoke? Thank you. They say you're a hard man, Mr. Moody. Hard but fair, eh? The Earl Street copper. Like the tart with a heart of gold. Rubbish. I hate most kind of villains. And I went after them the same way that Bullman does. Tricks, deception, blackmail, violence. I used them all, son. Yeah. Now you sound like an ex-copper. Just answer me one question. No promises. Are you still on the crook? <laughs> OK, OK. It's Thresher, isn't it? You don't think he's kosher? What's the threat to you? Did you find anything? For God's sake, Spider, you... You risk two years minimum to break in there. Now, come on, what's the big secret? Have you got a lot of pool around here? I might have. Can you get my socks back? Uh, forgive the slight smile playing on my lips. William George Scott, you were charged that on the night of May the 14th, between the hours of 11 p.m. and 2.30 a.m., you did feloniously at... Leave it! Excuse me, Sergeant. Out. It's about this case. Urgent? Yeah. Right. is a charge of wasting police time. Did you know that? Yeah, it's, um, three days hard labour, isn't it? You could have ended all this hours ago. I'm sorry, I'm not with you, George. Come in, sir. By God. You went right through with it. I take it for everything I said, Spider. Here you are. Well deserved. First class. 
Why is my inner office? Past the guards. Wait till my insurer is here. The, uh, the bet. Oh, yes, the bet, yeah. Mm. But you were caught. Otherwise, I would have earned another ton, right? A <laughs> bet! I can still do him for going equipped. Bet or no bet. But, uh, but you wouldn't. Me? You're much too, uh, much too sensible. Way ahead of the game. Am I right? There are many things that we would throw away. Were we not afraid that others might pick them up? Yes, quite so. Uh, well, perhaps Spider should donate his winnings to the uh, Police Benevolent Fund. Our orphans are not that short. Then I apologise most sincerely, quite frankly. I didn't believe that Spider would have taken my wages seriously. But I am partly to blame. Ah. Uh, mm. a, a foolish prank. How much do you think I should be uh, fined? You, sir. Well. I am an accessory. You're very lucky to be acquainted with a man like this. I suppose you realise that. Oh, yes. I'm very grateful. Right, then. You'd better go. No charges. Shut your mouth! Can I have my car keys, please, Constable? Oh. Impossible. For a day or two. Red tape. You know. What were you doing in my office? I'm interested in history. And what have you learned? Oh, about the uh, factory in Italy that um, Brooks Brooks financed. With your money? You're a dreamer, Scott. Brooks has been with me for years. You were controller of that Italian operation. Right down to giving the nod for the big fire. Not a bad caper. <laughs> I've never heard such rubbish. And nothing in my office could lead you to such a bizarre conclusion. I saw the document. Right, thank you, Martin. He'll do. What uh, document? The letter giving every detail of your involvement in the replicas business. Names places, the Swiss bank codes, insurance on the factory, the lot. <laughs> Someone's been filling your head with absolute rubbish. Where was this uh, letter? I've heard they cry, you know. In the base of a lamp, on your desk. Brooks. Bust. Did you, uh, manage to retain this document? No. Brooks has it. Speaking man to man, Spider, does it convince the reader of my involvement? Beyond a doubt. Every detail can be checked, you see. In the parlance of the underworld, it, uh, it stitches me up, eh? Nicely. Odd assortment they have on this inquiry. My husband, for instance, and your own friend. I think your spider's rather dishy. I didn't know you'd met. He's just coming up through the garden now. Hello there. Tom Moody. Bless my soul. Can I offer you a lift? By all means. Why would Brooks hide such a document in my office? 
Oh, safe place. I presume he had hinted to you of his existence? Oh, yes. I don't think a day has passed for seven years. And in the meantime, he's risen up in the wake of your legitimate successes? Of course. Did you ever try to recover it? No, I assume it was in the hands of lawyers. Or in a bank. Crafty old Brooks. Clearly, Eton isn't all war games and wanking, is it? <laughs> what am I to do with you? You know enough to finish me. I don't grass. I can't take that chance. It's the big sleep, is it? Oh, I'm not a violent man. But prudent. Oh, oh yes. All I've got to do is to go back to Bullman and tell him that something's missing from my office. It turns up in your girlfriend's flat and you're out of the way for six years. You would do that too, wouldn't you? As you say, Spider. Just like that. Well. Oh. I suppose now we come to the uh, or else calls, do we? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Resign from the commission, leave England, profit yourself to the tune of 25,000, payable anywhere but in this country. Give me time to think. I don't see how I can. I don't see how you can't. My going to prison isn't going to keep you out of it, and you had better believe it. 24 hours. Yeah, bastard's up to something. It's like a... A name on the tip of your tongue, you know? We got work to do, Sarge. Reports mm. on yesterday's collars. I thought you might want to do some interrogations. Yeah. What about that case of... Interfering bastard Moody's done. What? It's turned off my tap. Derek, tell me something. What's that? I think I'm going a bit balmy about Spider Scott. Of course not, Sarge. You see, you need my dripping tap. It's a great piece of theatre in this sordid trade of ours. You know what we are, Derek? What are we, Sarge? Society's refuse collectors. Am I right? The garbage men. That's us. Yeah. Uh, that thrush is a ripe villain, you know. I'm going to stay on that inquiry and nail that bastard. I never doubted it for a second. The body of an elderly man was discovered in his flat in Cheney Walk has been identified Hang as about. Alistair Vernon Wilder, Listen. an mm. antique dealer and auctioneer. Police are looking for a man aged between 30 and 35, over six feet tall, oh. with dark hair, who was seen entering the house around the time of Mr. Quilter's death. Christ, I forgot. You forgot you murdered somebody. <laughs> you are getting absent-minded. No, the person that had Quilter murdered was the same guy that tried to knock me off outside Bucketface Smith's antique shop. Where is the old rascal, eh? Hey?
I find it intolerable the way you pursue me into my most private moments. Well, coming from you, that's rich. Well, what do you think? I can't imagine why you wish to burden me with such a tale. Well, I would have thought MI5 would be interested. Thresher, power in the land. Then you are ignorant of the workings of our organs of government. Go to the police if you feel certain crimes have been committed. Who, for instance, Sergeant Bloody Bullman? Have some respect for the children, dear boy. You really are the limit. My word against Thresher's. No evidence. Oh, come on, Fairfax, I'm in a spot. Kindly go away. My people are not interested in your problems. What about, um, Thresher's bribe to get me out of the country? Maybe I could use his cheque as evidence. Oh, God, how tiresome you are. Why the devil don't you take his damn cheque and, in the name of the almighty, go? Ah, oh, I see. The establishment is closing its ranks, is it, to protect Thresher? Oh, the devil do you think you are, the what Tyler of cat burglars? Instead of carping about some long past picadillos of Peter Thresher's, why don't you think of the schools, the hospitals, the Thresher Marsland grants to the arts? Surely the good the man has done far outweighs any reallocation of a few obscure Greek jugs. Oh, uh, oh, Angus, kindly get me off this damn thing, will you? Ah, 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 ah. Think of the children. You heard about quota? Yeah. Wasn't me to quote him. Uh, I left them able to talk, didn't I? Oh, yeah. You did a great job, didn't you, eh? Well, we haven't to please, don't we? Nothing too violent, I said. That was part of the contract. Pipe, please, love. Uh, listen, Kincaid. Speaking about contracts... I'm listening. I think you'd better come and sit down, Smiley. I've, um... I've got me a contract on your good self, Spider. What sort of contract? Uh, well, it ain't no recording contract, and that's for sure, I suppose. It's a big one, is it? Yep. Boot the heel, Bert. I don't suppose you can tell me who. Oh, come on, it's not very professional, is it, mate? And you didn't think of turning it down, did you? Listen, have you seen have you seen the pound against the Franks, right? I mean the bloody Frank, mate. When? Oh, listen, come on, don't worry, it's not any of Shane? Look, I just I just thought I'd tell you, you know, seeing as how we're such great mates, right? Sad, really, isn't it? What? Oh, nothing. Do me a favour, knocker. Yeah, sure, yeah. Stall your punter for a couple of days so I can make, you know, arrangements. Really. Yeah. Yeah, all right, yeah. Thanks, knocker. Good pal. Listen, you know, you was you was the only bloke who ever bothered to be kind to me. Now that that means a lot to me. You know what I mean? Morning, Liam. Morning, sir. Morning, Mickey. How's tricks then? Well, I can't complain. Maud's down with measles at age 31, can you imagine? Yeah. Well, I might have an interest in this, uh, this quilter murder. How far have you got? The only possible witness, a blind woman and her dog. Mm. What did she hear? Well, somebody comes to the front door. Mm -hmm. Here's the sign of broken glass, hesitates, forces his way back in. Round about time of death, huh? Plus the description of a man seen parking his car near the house. Yeah? Over six feet tall, brown hair, athletic. <laughs> that could be quite a few people, couldn't Sorry, it? Sorry, I can't help you. Yeah, well, I think I'll drop it. Thanks all the same. Willis, see you. See you, Liam. See you, Liam. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a few years back, this quilt was a fence, mostly a big house, Tom. Any good? If he 
you weren't such an ugly sod, Mickey, I'd give you a big French kiss. Mr. Scott, can I? Thank you very much. Have you put ah? Uh... Hmm. <clears throat> yes. What is this? Have you put a contract out on me? A contract to kill you? You're sure? Oh yes. I'm horrified. Can you believe me? If there's anything I can do... I think it's about Schneider. time I met Frank Brooks, isn't it? Brooks hasn't been seen. Not at his home, not at the office. I think he's gone, uh, AWOL. Yeah, that figures. Look at this room. 27 years of effort. Christ, my dear. Why is fate so... Fate is a strumpet. We have it on the very best authority. Would you take on a job for me? Me? That seems a little bit unlikely, doesn't it? I thought you wanted me out of the country. If I can just get hold of that, uh, that document. I mean, if you can. No, thank you. I've got my own problems. Twenty thousand pounds. Same amount as before. Half an hour, half in delivery. Cash. I've got to sort out who wants me dead. It could be Frame Brooks, in which case we might have a deal. Or it could be you, Thresher. In which case there might be a conflict of interests. Ah, then we each must seek our own salvation. Precisely. You've lost me, eh, friend. Come on. Not very good at it, are you, eh? Eh? Looks as if you could do with a square meal. Now, what a law are you? On a needle. Is that it? Well, why don't you come back to my gaff, eh? Have some coffee. Perhaps a plate of soup. Homemade. But a bird. But it's standing about in the cold, isn't it, eh? Come on, then. We've got a living to earn, you know. How long have you got to tell me? I don't know. All day, I suppose. About this evening. Another bloke. Dear me. What a setup. How much they're paying him? Ten quid. Ten quid? 
What's the game then? Well, money, innit? I was going to try that busking, but uh, couldn't work out an act. They said it was for a divorce. Busking? Do you know, I reckon you're about the worst tail job I've ever met, you know that? <laughs> well, I mean, it's not my scene, is it? I'm more into uh, punk, you know? Punk? Come and sit down. There. That was your shoes, mate. I could tell by the tattered tennis shoes you're no pro. You see, the real pros. A little shabby as they like, you know? Even make you look well dressed, right? <laughs> but good, strong shoes every time. Shoes were dead giveaway. Want some beer? Yeah. All right. Who, um, who was it? Paid you the ten quid, eh? Cheers. Yeah, good luck. Oh, no. Thought you were in heaven, did you? Where's my grapes? They've all turned sour, son. Well, you'll be happy to hear there aren't any bones broken. What happened? Can you remember your name? Well, of course I can remember my name. Bad tempered as usual. What's the last thing you remember? Beer. <sighs> <laughs> Hello, George. You're winning, then? No. I waited at the hospital, but the nothing ambulance didn't turn up. How come? I don't know. I ain't bleeding Tom Moody as hijack spider. What's old Moody up to? Don't know. Has he gone private or what? Do you know that the bloke that murdered Trotsky is still alive? Which Trotsky is that, sir? And now they've given him a bloody medal. Makes you think, doesn't it? Isn't it about time you told me what was going on? Mate, everything that's happened to me, you seem to know about it. Talk about me and my shadow. So why not tell me what's going on, eh? This might seem a bit optimistic, but I must ask you to trust me. I promise you, you can. All right, thanks, Lou. I was very nearly killed there, you know. Well, you certainly made a mess of a few sunshine breakfasts. <laughs> that day of the inquiry, I was dead put out about that miniature amphora. I knew I'd nicked it. So I went to the fence. One bucket faced Smith. What's all this interest in communism, Sarge? University of the Air. You're into that, Sarge? BA in politics and philosophy, actually. When I pass it all. Does that mean we'll see you on the telly? Hmm. Tom Moody. I made a mental note on him. What was in it for Thresher? Did Brooks know he was on the crook? If 
Fancy falling six floors without a fracture, eh? You're a mug, son. Hey, why protect Thresher after all that's happened? I don't run to the law, Tom. I'm only telling you this much because you're out of it and I know you can keep Sturm. Unless something happens to you, huh? Something permanent next time. Mmm. Bliss. Share blooming bliss. There you go, mate. You get that down, you. Oh, you are an angel. I thought you'd be a bit upset, you know. It's a baby point. You're alive, aren't you? I'm in love with you and you're a schmuck. Here's to temperance. Oh, sorry. Did I start with you? <sighs> you thought I'd come to knock you off, didn't you? Listen, would I croak a friend in front of his good lady? How oh, the hell I would. Haven't you ever heard of doorbells, Mr. Roberts? Just do it, man. Listen, heard about your parachute jump without the parachute. Oh, dear. Where's my grapes? Oh. So who done it then, Spike? Well, he was a bit of a toe rag, actually. He was um, medium height, long hair, beard. Very scruffy plim soles. Um, strong. Very good at it. Oh, uh, yeah, right. Danny DeBusco, yeah, he's done a few, all right. Well, who hired him then? Same bloke who hired you. Do you know there's certain things which just ain't done, namely putting out two contracts under one geezer? Bit of a slow on your professional skill, is it, Knocker? Listen, know that contract I've got out on you? Well, as far as I'm concerned, it can be purchased off, you know what I mean? Who buy? Well, you, I should have thought. How much? Four grand. Yeah, all right. Um, I'll have to owe it to you for a few days. Yeah? Listen, you're a friend of mine, William, right? I don't want to talk about money. Listen, here, I've got the address of that punter for you. How do you find out where he lives? Don't ask. Insurance, right? Thanks, Knocker. You're real pal. We was in the Peewit Patrol together. Yes, that doesn't work since uh, somebody threw it across the room. Been in the walls, have we? You bastard thresher. You had Quilter murdered. And you damn nearly killed me. And where's Bucketface? Hey! What roof was he dropped off? Oh, dear God. Yeah. Your punk busker dropped me off a roof. I fell on a pile of cartons. Family-sized cornflakes saved my life. Unsolicited testimonial. Yes, I heard about Quilter on the radio. Spider, I swear it. Not down to me. You know I do not know what to believe anymore. Brooks has disappeared. Oh, no. No, that's just a little bit too neat. He could be dead. <laughs> no, not Edwin. I should look for him, Spider, before he goes on to the, uh, the hat trick.
I think you'll find it's really empty. You've so been a cat burglar, Tom. Brooks moved out the morning you were arrested. Lock, Lock stock and frilly drawers. How'd you get in without me hearing? Quietly. Where is he? Oh, I suppose he'll, uh... He'll turn up. Oh, that fire in Italy when the uh, factory burned down. Ah, looked it up, did we? A night watchman died in it. An old man. They found his wedding ring and the left lower mandible in the ashes. Quite a blaze, apparently. Sir Brooks is a murderer. No wonder he's trying to scrub me. And Thresher. Sorry, Tom. I'm no grass. Listen. Your life is in danger. I can cope. There's a whisper going around that you're, uh, you're still bent. Pullman? Peter Thresher. The whisper is that your reformation is one big con to get you into the Major League Industrial Secrets. He's fitting me up. He's a powerful enemy. Now, what will you do? Well, find Brooks, if he's still alive. Hello? Hello? I'm Cindy Thresher. Is Edwin around? I think he's moved. <laughs> Nonsense. He'd have told me. The flat's completely empty. Spider, what are you doing here? Looking for Eddie. Are you a friend of Edwin's? No, no but I know your dad. I don't quite understand. Have you taken your gear as well? No, I never left much. You creep. What a lousy trick. Don't worry, Cindy, we won't say a word. But where's he gone? Shall I drive you home? See you around, Tom. You're very fit, aren't you? Oh, I just wear this bandage to stop my muscles overdeveloping. <laughs> Daddy spoils me, I suppose. Meaning? Meaning I'm used to getting it all my own way. I think you've just been propositioned. You're a very naughty girl. How old are you? Nineteen. My room's on the first floor. Up the drain pipe and through the bathroom. Nothing out of the ordinary, then? I'll leave the window open. Come round after 12. How discreet can you be? Daddy still doesn't know about Edwin. Just after 12, then. Rosie on the switchboard asked if you'd been transferred to Special Branch, Sarge. Hmm. Fascinating. On account of that book you're reading. Well, seeing as how she noticed what book I was reading, we might well ask her the same question. Bloody heck. Sarge? Well, you know we couldn't find a connection between Quilter and Spider. Yeah. But it's only special branch that's hanging under Quilter's file and won't let anyone see it. Yeah, but they checked and found no link with Spider Scott. Yeah, so they said. Oh, come on, Sarge. Mind on the ball. Why would special branch protect Spider Scott, eh? I know of only one man that can answer that question. Finish your tea. Come on, Romeo. Are you coming up or have you changed your mind? 
I used to be a bloody cat burglar once. Budge over there. Oh. Come on. Oh. 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 Stop me. Ex-Detective Chief Superintendent Mooney. Uh, Detective Sergeant Bullman here, sir. Uh, George Bullman. Yes, well, I, I'm, uh, I, I'm sorry to disturb your beauty sleep, sir, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I understand that you're handling the operation concerning Spider Scott. Uh, uh, well, I'd rather not say over the phone, sir. Uh, can, could I come... What? There's like sticks of rhubarb. <laughs> no, psychiatrist like said to me, well, uh, what have you come to see me about? He said, I've come to talk to you about my brother. <laughs> what? I've come to talk to you about my brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Hey, what's this? Oh. We're having a threesome or something or what? Oh, oh it's Amanda. <laughs> uh, no, sir, I have not been drinking. Uh, no, sir, I understand. It's perfectly understood. Uh, I'm very sorry to disturb you. Uh, Have you been drinking? Do you know what time it is? No idea what you're bloody talking about. Hound Scott, all you like, but leave me to enjoy my retirement. This is from an ex-copper to a serving one. Get a bit of sleep in, you sound a bit loopy. Then he hangs up. I should grab 40 winks, Sarge. There's nothing about this in marks and bloody angles. Good evening, Miss Parsons. Or perhaps I should say good morning. He's not here. The spider isn't in. Thank you. I'll wait. How charmingly furnished.
Look, he usually comes back with some of his mates. They're a gang of real hard cases. F fighting drunk. No tea, thank you. I'll be fine. Just here. The law's all laid on, is it? Hmm? Well, don't bank on me giving my mouth shut about you, pal. We'll probably end up using the same cell. I suppose the um, inventive Cindy was all part of the bait, was she? Ghost of eight Christmases in Parkhurst, right enough. Did you watch us at it? Hmm? We you watch your daughter getting her rocks off? You bloody pervert. <laughs> 